is Eric back a naturopath. I've often been asked by people, how do you find if you've got an underlying allergy or sensitivity? You know, how do you know if a food's problematic to you? So should I stop that food? Should I stop eating tomatoes and bell peppers and grains because someone's told me they've got lectins in them and all this sort of business? Well, the idea is only to avoid foods that are problematic to you at that time, right? Many naturopaths, nutritionists, and chiropractors and people like this, I've been to so many conferences and I've heard so many people talking that the patients remain off these foods for life. <clears throat> I find that a load of nonsense. People change. Their digestive system changes. Their gut changes. Their microbiome gets weaker or stronger. So does their stomach, their pancreas, <clears throat> their small bowel. All these organs can really step up to the plate and improve. And then all of a sudden that allergy is no longer an allergy, right? Many, many children grow out of allergies. Any doctor will tell you that, right? Adults are the same. Adults can grow out of allergies as well. So remember, there are two types of animals we're dealing with here. We've got food intolerances and we've got food allergies. So intolerances is not implying that you've got an immune dysfunction or immune problem with that food. An allergy is an immune mediated reaction, whereas intolerance tends to be something else. And they often get all mixed up and confused by many people. Intolerances often can be fixed up when the gut's restored or, or the gut reset, they call it. Day. With, a, with a reset gut, you'll find in many instances when the pancreas is working better, particularly the pancreas, and the stomach is more powerful, that, all, that underlying intolerance disappears, it's gone. The person can no longer, uh, no longer experiences those symptoms. I've seen this a thousand times or more occur in the clinic. And it's the same with the allergy, allergic response. Allergic responses are different in that they're immune mediated. In this case, I'll have a much longer look at the patient's small intestine, but I'll also look at the genetics to see, is it a family issue? And with type 1 responses, IgE, it can be, you know, red hair, freckled person. I've seen this. The worst case I ever had was a guy from Scotland. I think he was in his 20s. The food allergy report came back with like 80% of foods he was allergic to. And uh, when I looked at the background, both the ma and the pa had asthma, eczema, hay fever. They, you know, it was coming from both mum and dad. And this is a serious case. It took a long, long time to get this guy's skin clear, but we eventually got there. But just about every protein food he reacted to. Now, that's an exceptionally rare case. Now, you won't be in that category. But how do you track down a hidden and underlying food allergy or intolerance? Allergies will probably stick with. Intolerance is a little bit different. With the allergies, the first thing I look at um, for a person is I look very carefully at the case history to make sure that they are in that allergic category. So asking a lot of questions of that person. Did your mum react to this food? Did your dad react? Have you got any siblings or anyone in the family? Is there any history of asthma, eczema, hay fever? Anyone taken antihistamines in the family? Have you taken them? So <clears throat> sometimes when I get a patient in my room, it's almost like a, a kind of al qaeda interrogation. I feel like I'm sort of interrogating the person, you know, but not quite putting a torch under their face, but you sometimes feel like that's what's happening. So, yeah, but when you get that information, it all makes sense then. You can really work it out. It, I cannot tell you how many times also I've seen someone who said, ah, oh, by the way, I had an antibiotic last year, and ever since then, I can't tolerate XYZ food. I've heard that so many times. And ask yourself that question. Have you had any medical treatment? And then X, Y, Z later, months, weeks, or whatever later, you couldn't tolerate? So see if there's any tie in there, okay? So here's what I look for. Seasonal, all right? There's a problem you have come up at certain times of the year. Because that could mean, let's just say hay fever or itchy skin. It could mean that you're eating a particular fruit or food uh, that's seasonal that's causing you the problem. I need to carefully look at the symptoms and signs, what's happening. Signs are what I see with my eyes on your body or your breath or your skin, whatever, and symptoms are what you're telling me. 
So symptoms are subjective, okay? You can tell me whatever you want, whether I believe it or not, it's another thing. And objective is what I see with my eyes, which I know hopefully is not deceiving me. So we've got to look at the subjectivity and the objectivity, you know, very carefully. That's a good way to determine if there's an allergy or not. And then, um, of course, there's also always the allergy testing. I'm not really that fussed on um, kinesiology, to be honest, you know, um, holding on to a substance and then saying yes, no, all this kind of business. And I mean, sure, there will be some great kinesiologists out there, but I just see a lot of this as kind of woo-woo kind of, you know, pendulum kind of stuff. So I prefer blood testing, to be honest, or working clinically more with, as I said, the subjective and objective symptoms. Tummy pains, itchy skin, itchy eyes, unusual symptoms, strange symptoms that you haven't had before. <clears throat> Here's a key one. A person has a strong desire for that particular food. If you've got, a, say, an under 10-year-old with an unexplained symptom, look at the food that he or she is really screaming for or wanting or, or you know, telling you or demanding that food. That's an allergy sitting there waiting. I've seen that a lot of times with kids. A child could be screaming for oranges or screaming for a piece of cheese. Allergy. Look at a family member who goes off to the refrigerator or pantry or has a particular snack that they just can't live without. Allergy. So something that you're drawn to all the time is often something that can invoke an allergic response in your body. Very, very common. Common thing to see. So I hope that gives you a little bit of information on allergies. So don't forget the seasonal, the unusual symptoms, the drawn to the food the strange gut symptoms, the doctor's visits that result in, you know, well, we don't know what's wrong with Johnny, you know. I mean, uh, every doctor says that, doesn't got a clue about an allergy. And sometimes the tests they perform to determine the underlying allergy, the RAS test, can also give false results. So you could take your child or to the doctor, has a test, and the doctor says, nothing wrong with his child, and it could be. So in that case, you may need to look further afield. Thanks for tuning in.